Welcome to today's webinar, Operational Intelligence for Telecommunications. My name is Randy France, and I'm Telecommunications Industry Strategy Lead for Esri. Joining Esri today will be ETI Software, and what will be this is the sixth in a series of, tele of Telecommunications in the Future webinar series. Joining me today for the webinar will be Patrick Hulls. Uh, Patrick has been with Esri for four years and is our technical evangelist for telecommunications. He has a master's in GIS from the University of Redlands. Joining Patrick will be Brad Hine, ETI Software Product Director, Analytic Solutions. Brad has 14 years in the telecom software industry and specializes in product management and currently is responsible for ETI Software's Vision FMS and Vision Analytics platforms. Brad is a frequent conference speaker for the Fiber Broadband Association and Broadband Community Summit. In the past, he has contributed case studies and articles to Esri Art News and ISC Magazine. He is a graduate of the University of Georgia. Today's webinar is part of a six-part series. Of the 2017 Telecommunication of the Future webinar series had five previous ones and all webinars are recorded. Webinars can be found on esri.com slash telecom. Just go to the tab in the upper right there and you'll be able to get the link to each of the recordings. Today's webinar will be available online as a recording in a couple days. I'd like to cover some of the logistics here. I wanna make sure that you have a good viewing and uh, listening experience. So you can connect via telephone or microphone on your, and speakers on your PC. You can also adjust your view to get a larger image if you so desire. And we also encourage you to type in any questions you have. Uh, please don't wait to the end of the webinar. Feel free at any time to type in a question uh, and be sure to hit the send button. We'll be collecting the, the questions during the webinar and then at the end we'll be answering the questions that have been submitted. In today's competitive market, operational intelligence is more important than ever. Collecting data is not a problem. It is turning that data into useful and timely information so it can be disseminated across the entire organization. The goal is to empower all employees with the information they need to react quickly and effectively to changing market and organizational dynamics. At Esri, we can make this happen by applying what we call the science of where. Science of Wear is a new way to look at data. It provides context and visualization. It streamlines the spatial analysis of geographic and enterprise data through intuitive maps, charts, and graphs. Science of Wear allows users to unlock the full potential of their data. It uses the power of geography to integrate, visualize, analyze, and understand the data that's available. It's a new way to look at data to inform and empower the entire organization. Today we'll be looking at operational intelligence and ArcGIS. Patrick will be introducing the ArcGIS platform and how it can be used to enhance operational intelligence. Then Brad Hine from ETI Software will be looking at OSS BSS integration, specifically with the Vision 360 product. He'll also be covering some case studies of customers and, how, and their implementations. And then one of the things that's always critical for our listeners is, okay, we see the technology, we see how it's used, but how do you really get started? And so both Brad and uh, Patrick will be talking about how it's best to get started. Talking about getting started, what we'd like to do is ask a few polling questions of the audience. So the first question we have, give you a chance to participate, is on average, how recent is the data your organization uses for analyzing operational performance? Please select one of these. Uh, is it current? In other words, information is available in less than a day. Is it average, about a week old, or a month old? Or is the data that you're receiving for your job over a month old? Please select one of those and hit the submit button. A lot of responses coming in. Good. 
give it another couple seconds here. All right, let's go look at the results. There are the results. That's uh, surprised me a little bit there. It seems like we have a stratification there. Uh, a lot of uh, people are seeing uh, data that's uh, less than a day old, so they're getting real-time data. Uh, and yet uh, we see a third of the audience is uh, really over a month old. And some smattering in between between a week and a month. It's good results. Good to know. Next question we'd like to ask is, do departments and business units within your organization have access to timely operational performance information? So are the intervals that, that you previously identified, are they appropriate? Uh, first one would be no. Information for reports is often out of date. Um, sometimes, most reports contain recent data and they're usable. Or yes, reporting interval is adequate to meet most needs. Or perhaps you, you don't know. So please submit your response here. Yeah, a few more, give it a few more seconds here. All right. And let's share those results to the audience. That's kind of interesting. It's uh, some of you are getting some outdated information, but it seems like uh, about a third or uh, most reports uh, contain recent data or sometimes. And uh, so about 67% uh, are either getting fairly recent stuff or uh, stuff that really meets the business needs. We got one more poll question for you. This one, so does your company integrate GIS technology into the uh, analytics process? And please select one of these. Yes, uh, GIS is used, no it's not, or you don't know. a couple more seconds here for people to respond. Okay, and we'll share that. So does your company integrate uh, GIS technology and analytics? Uh, over half of you saying, yes, you do. Uh, I, I could guarantee you four or five years ago, uh, that would not have been the case. That's interesting. So what we're going to do is show you some technology and some ways that you can improve that. And for those of you that aren't using GIS technology in the analytics or your company's not, we're, we're going to have uh, some information there that's going to allow you to better understand how it can be applied. So with that, what I'd like to do is I'll turn it over to Patrick Hulls, and Patrick's going to go through and explain uh, how the ArcGIS platform can be used to enhance and improve operational intelligence. Patrick? Thank you, Randy. So first off, I'd like to take a few seconds here and cover ArcGIS and how it's architected to support operational intelligence and a lot of data coming in through multiple systems. So ArcGIS is a complete mapping and analytics platform um, that provides GIS capabilities across organizations. Um, it's a services-based architecture uh, that provides those capabilities through desktop um, and mo web and mobile applications and allows for open APIs for integration into other systems. It's a distributed architecture, uh, so it can scale out depending on the volume of data coming in. Uh, and it's also available as a on-premise solution uh, as well as a SaaS offering. So I mentioned that ArcGIS provides kind of core GIS capabilities across uh, organizations through what we call a web GIS um, architecture or, or pattern. So those core GIS capabilities are spatial analysis. Um, so being able to analyze large volumes of geographic information, uh, mapping and visualization, uh, taking those results or the raw data and visualizing it through maps, 
3D GIS. So if some of that data has uh, 3D values or Z values, you can visualize and represent that information in a 3D environment. Um, Real-time capabilities. So if you have information coming in in real time from IoT sensors or other uh, databases out there, that information can be pulled in and visualized in real time. Capabilities for imagery and remote sensing. Uh, so if you're collecting uh, aerial imagery, drone data, um, ArcGIS can provide the capabilities to, to manage as well as um, analyze and process that information. And then finally, the data collection and management. So managing of large volumes of data, um, core systems of record, of geographic information, network information, as well as a variety of apps for collecting that data. So I mentioned this, that these core capabilities are provided in a services-oriented architecture uh, with a suite of APIs and SDKs that sit on top of that. This allows for other OSS and BSS systems to integrate directly into ArcGIS and pull out these capabilities. So if you were looking to um, enable any of your external systems with GIS capabilities, these can be exposed into those systems. The data that is contained in those systems can also be pulled into ArcGIS. Um, so all of that spatial information, so you can apply any of these capabilities on top of that data. ArcGIS also offers a uh, mapping portal or a system of engagement for managing all of that content uh, and web services through a user interface um, that allows users to access it directly through ArcGIS uh, through a variety of configurable web, mobile, and desktop ArcGIS applications. So how does this architecture and these capabilities really enhance operational intelligence? Well, with this web services pattern, different groups and systems across the organization can share information into a centralized location to allow multiple people to monitor that information, better respond to incidents that happen, report on that information, and then be more proactive in their responses. Also, I mentioned the real-time capabilities of ArcGIS. So if there are sensors pulling device information um, out in the network, ArcGIS can integrate directly into those devices and pull in all sorts of different real-time information. So all of this really provides a better spatial uh, awareness. So with ArcGIS, you've got the ability to monitor lots of spatial data in real time. Uh, whether it's coming from an OSS or other IoT devices. Uh, you can visualize these network elements. Um, you can then analyze spatially all of this information coming in. This allows you to evaluate uh, different critical events in a kind of a visual mapping interface and then better respond to these emerging issues uh, really before they develop into uh, more extreme customer experience affecting uh, problems. ArcGIS allows you to uh, respond to these incidents, uh, whether it be prioritizing uh, that work based off of where crews are in real time, their location, how quickly they can get to that particular area, or using the spatial analysis to understanding who is affected, uh, what customers are affected, their SLAs, uh, and prioritizing based off of that information. With ArcGIS, uh, you can report and aggregate all this information into different service areas, wire center boundaries, um, or other corporate boundaries, provide this information as kind of a holistic view to corporate management um, to keep them informed as far as the number of outages, customers that are affected, uh, or anything around the operational intelligence um, kind of area. And then finally, be more proactive. So with all of this data coming in, uh, you've got this historical record that allows you to uh, analyze the historical performance um, and understand what is going on, apply some machine learning as well as spatial analysis um, and incorporate the geographic component 
uh, to allow your organizations to be proactive uh, and really understand uh, when devices fail, understand what's going on in the network, and predict what is going to happen at a later date. Uh, this will ultimately allow your organizations to deliver a better customer experience uh, with this less costly proactive maintenance. And so now what I'd like to do is do a quick demonstration to show how ArcGIS can enable your organizations with operational intelligence. So here we have a dashboard that is pulling in a lot of different data sources from real-time devices as well as third-party business systems. So this dashboard not only gives you the map visualization, but also summaries of that information coming in. So here we can see within the map view, there is some information that is coming in from our um, outside plant records. We've got our cell site locations, we've got our fiber records, um, as well as our data center locations and even visualizing our sector information. Now, each of these sectors is then also tied to real-time information. So we can be pulling in uh, current connections, how much bandwidth, um, throughput, any type of metric that these sectors are collecting. We can pull that information and visualize it according to top performing uh, sectors as well as our lowest performing sectors. And this real-time information can be visualized um, not only within the map, but also within these charts. So here we can see the total volume of data being consumed and how many devices we currently have connected to our network. Now, along with pulling in information from uh, our uh, internal systems, we can also pull in information from external feeds. Uh, for example, uh, live weather. So uh, unfortunately today, there's nothing going on in uh, the Florida region, um, but if you are in kind of the uh, northeast part of the U.S., specifically the Chicago area, you're probably getting some snow today. Um, but weather warnings, watches, uh, real-time weather, pulling that information in to help either predict where a uh, network could be going down um, or prioritize response based off of uh, those incoming warnings. Speaking of those incoming warnings, uh, we currently have six alarms that have been triggered within our network. So if we zoom into those locations, we can see the number of alarms on the left-hand side, uh, as well as uh, a listing here of the alarm types. I can select within um, our list here and zoom dynamically to where our alarm is and have a better sense of exactly where that device is in our network. We also can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner that we have our total uh, number of customers that are affected um, by these alarms. And as I zoom in and out, uh, we'll notice that the total number of affected customers is based off of um, our map extent. Now with ArcGIS, we can also visualize other data. Um, for example, we've got our uh, coverage data that we've brought in, and this is our current online coverage. So with these alarms um, being triggered, there are uh, offline coverage that we can also then visualize and pull in underneath our online coverage. So if we turn that on, we can then see the overlapping coverage where we have a cell site that is uh, currently down, what the coverage area of that cell site is, but also because we've got overlapping coverage in our network, we can see the actual coverage hole. Now ArcGIS can also allow organizations to prioritize response um, based off of uh, certain parameters. One of those might be the total number of customers that are affected. So if we highlight our coverage holes here, we can run some spatial analysis on these coverage holes to see 
the actual number of um, customers that are affected within that area. We can look at the total number of mobile customers, business customers, and any SLAs that we have that are contained within that area. So if we look at this, we've got about 240 mobile customers within that location. Now, based off of just the visualization, that looks like the biggest hole. Um, this one over here looks like it might be um, quite a large hole as well. Uh, we can see that the number of volume or the no number of mobile customers has drastically increased for this particular uh, coverage hole. But then if we go all the way over here to kind of this smaller hole, here we have the total number of mobile customers uh, pretty much skyrocket, telling us that this area of Florida is more densely populated than some of those other kind of rural areas. So just using visualization, we might have prioritized response based off of just the largest uh, hole in our network, but using some spatial analysis and what we call geo-enrichment, we were able to actually see the total number of customers affected. So now this is the alarm that we want to uh, respond to. So the next part to this is understanding where our field trucks are, our field crews, and prioritizing which crew to respond to uh, these, uh, this particular alarm. So we can pull in real-time information of the location of all of our tr trucks, um, as well as pull up information on their status. So if they're already assigned to a particular incident or trouble ticket, we don't want to um, reach out to them. But we, what we can also do is look at how long it's going to take them to get to these, uh, this particular alarm. So let's start with this truck. Uh, here we can see that um, based on where they currently are and the route that it would take to get them to that location, they're 30 miles away, um, but there is um, about, uh, it would take them about 60 minutes. Because we're pulling in real-time traffic information, this tells us that there is probably an accident here on the freeway uh, that is limiting them from getting to that in a timely manner. So if we take a look at this particular truck, um, they are available and it's gonna take them about 52 minutes. So a little bit less than um, this truck. So we can contact this particular person and have them go out and respond. While they are responding uh, with ArcGIS, we can also provide those field techs with mobile tools um, so that they can collect information about our network. So this could be damage assessment reports that they are using a form-based application that also collects the location of that hazard or that incident. And in real time, as they're collecting that information, report it back to this dashboard and then to any management teams. And so with that, we will go back to our slides. So with that example and that demonstration, uh, we saw some high level ways that we can take information from external business systems as well as external feeds um, and other field crews and pull all that information into kind of an operational view to give us better operational intelligence. Um, using spatial analysis as well as mapping and visualization, uh, we could better prioritize response. Uh, and because we're recording all of the real-time information as far as capacity and bandwidth uh, and any other performance information on our devices, we then can analyze that information spatially through time and do some predictive analytics to understand what type of devices may fail um, at a certain um, you know, threshold or approaching storm. So now we'd like to do a couple more audience polls. So the first one here is, is your organizations or companies currently using GIS-based analytics to process and analyze the data in the following 
areas. So is are your organizations using um, any type of spatial analytics within uh, the network performance teams, uh, within customer care, marketing and sales, competitive and competitive analysis? This could be analyzing the real-time information coming from network or trouble tickets or reports, um, or it can be uh, you know, static information um, billing information to help support um, better marketing and sales. We'll uh, give it a couple more minutes here. I should say a couple more seconds. All right, and then we'll close out this poll and we will share these results with you all. So, 40% um, have said that uh, network performance are using some sort of GIS-based analytics today uh, to analyze maybe uh, historical bandwidth information uh, or any other details that are coming out of the network. Uh, marketing and sales are second. Um, this is a, a typical pattern that we see. Um, GIS helping to support operations in the network side as well as uh, you know, retail site planning, market analytics. Uh, and to support the sales side. Customer care, uh, typically we see that customers will take the results of uh, the analysis from those two groups and share it with customer care so that they have a better um, sense of either restoration times um, from outages uh, or that they understand you know, a customer 360 profile. So one final question here. Where do you see the greatest value add from a GIS-based analytics reporting and capability? So from what you know about GIS today, um, what you've seen here today, uh, where would you think that GIS would provide uh, the, um, the, the highest return on investment for these different groups in your organization? Again, network performance, um, customer care, marketing and sales, and competitive or competitive analysis. A few more answers are coming in. Give everybody just a couple more seconds. And then we will close out this poll and share the results. So 52% uh, I've said network performance uh, followed very, well, I guess they are equal, 17% for both customer care, marketing, and sales, uh, and then 13% uh, for um, competitive analysis. So um, network performance definitely has a lot of use cases and a lot of data that is being collected that is spatial in nature uh, and allows for the GIS to uh, analyze uh, that information. Um, marketing and sales, uh, from what we have seen, the analysis, spatial analysis on that information has been very, very valuable from a return on investment standpoint. Understanding exactly uh, who customers are, where they are, demographic profiling, and then even taking some of those results and sharing it to the network planning or engineering or performance team um, to provide them with some insight into either or expand the network, uh, maybe uh, deliver new types of services based off of that customer demand uh, and so forth. So we'll go ahead and hide those results. So with that, what I'd like to do now is hand it over to Brad Hine from ETI Software uh, to talk a little bit more about their OSS, BSS integrations, uh, and really how they have supported their customers integrating all this information and providing some GIS-based uh, solutions. So Brad, uh, I'll let you take control. Thank you, Patrick. And hello, everyone. While I uh, switch over to my screen here. <clears throat> Uh, thanks again, everyone. As Patrick said, my name is Brad Hine. Um, 
I've worked with ETI software now for almost the last 10 years, and I've been in product management for uh, for that whole time. One of the one of the cool things that I get to do in project or product management is um, brainstorm about new ideas that we would have to complement our current product set uh, and find better uses for it and better markets for it. Look at what everybody in the market is doing. Uh, brainstorm with our own ideas and kind of put it all together uh, and come up with something that would enhance what we do and, and more efficient. So a little bit of what I want to speak about today. Um, just tell you, you a little bit about ETI software. So our core business for the last 25 years have been OSS and BSS integrations. Our customers are uh, traditional telecommunications companies, cable TV companies, um, municipal utility companies, or in satellite companies, anybody that's really trying to service, activate, and manage traditional telecom services for uh, voice, video, and data. So phone, internet, TV type services. So, and with that, we've grown quite a bit. We've, uh, uh, the core of our customer base of telecom service providers is really here in the U.S. In the last uh, five years or so, we've branched out globally. Um, currently to date, our OSS and BSS subscriber management systems manage over 7 billion daily transactions globally. Um, lots of different devices we have to manage to deliver those services to make sure that service is reaching the subscriber itself. So. We have some customers in markets of a couple thousand subscribers in more rural markets, scaling all the way up into a few million different subscribers in multi-markets and in, uh, in metro areas. Um, to do that, what we have to do for our subscriber management system is we need to be able to manage all the back-end technologies and systems. So if you'd ask anybody that works in a um, a telecom service provider, uh, what kind of systems they manage in their total ecosystem on a daily basis, you'd get a handful and a wide variety. Well, we're really just concerned with those technologies and systems that track the subscriber themselves, that touch the technologies that can activate for voice, video, and data. And along with that, we have legacy products and management system, legacy network systems, uh, all the way up until the most current and in, in, uh, in cutting edge systems today. Um, today, we, we manage over 130 different vendor technologies and systems integrations out of the box. Fortunately for us, we've been able to um, grow and now we're existing on five continents. Also, with the help of, uh, of Esri, we've grown into areas that we never would have been able to with the help of combining ArcGIS and their GIS infrastructure and integrations into our OSS and BSS systems. So what is OSS? What is OSS to everybody? Everyone has uh, a little bit of common knowledge about it. But in my daily job, in a typical OSS system and all the integrations to back end or front end systems that we may have, I come across a lot of information basically just about the subscriber themselves, who they are, of course, where they live, um, the billing system information, what are their services, have we activated their services, when did, they, did we activate their services, and what actually did we do for them, what devices did we activate on the network all the way to their home. And with talking about the network and managing devices and making sure that the network is provisioned, we also have to track those assets. We have to inventory those assets in an OSS system. All the way into, we get into the business groups with the marketing and the sales, because our database isn't just a provisioning database at that point. It becomes a very sales and market rich database with lots of robust information tied to the location or tied to the actual subscriber. So from that, our integrations with GIS start to touch into things like what's beyond our current 
subscriber base? What are every address, what's every address in the footprint that exists that we know about? What are some of the boundaries, census data, zip codes, uh, customer service areas, things like that? We jump into any type of data set table on the back end that could possibly live in our system. And what I've done in the last few years at ETI is I've tried to bring that into a front end GIS view. So really what we're talking about here is what we've created at ETI is a, a total solution for telecoms, what we call Vision 360. Now, almost half of that system in our modules and the system are integrated to either Esri ArcGIS desktop or Esri ArcGIS server. The first layer is what I spoke about already, our OSS layer. That's the layer with all our subscriber information. That's how we automate provisioning, lighting up service, making sure everybody has the services and the devices activated that they need to get their service. The second layer is our network layer. We have a product that we've built with Esri ArcGIS Desktop to design and manage all your fiber, all your assets, all your splicing, all of your projects throughout the outside plant in your footprint, managing up everything and integrating it with that OSS subscriber layer. So all of the engineering information can then live in a centralized location with all the subscriber and location information. The billing system is hugely important in our telecom systems. ETI currently today integrates to over a couple dozen different popular industry billing systems in the telecom arena. Um, that data also sometimes has to coexist with the OSS data. It has to mirror it because not only does the OSS have to activate the subscriber and track them on a monthly basis, that information needs to go to a billing system so an invoice can be printed. And finally, one of our newer, one, our newer modules is called ACS. Now, it says remote management of RGs. Essentially, what that means is a, in, a, in a model where there's a residential gateway in a home, or, and this is also starting to extend into more IoT realms, we're allowed to touch any device that lives on a network and manage that device from the skill that we've, that we've gotten over the years and our experience in managing devices and services with our OSS. Now, the other thing that we do with Esri and integration is what I'm gonna speak about today. Analytics, now what is analytics? It's different for everybody, but What's important to know is that we have found at ETI that the most important view of an analytics tool lives in the GIS. Since 90% of everything we deal with in telecom is going to be location-based, why don't we use a tool that agrees with that type of logic? I know I can attach anything to a location like a subscriber name, a device, a service, the network leading up to it the work vehicles that visited that today for a service ticket or an install ticket, uh, the marketing campaign that touched that house to make sure they didn't or wanted an upsell or, or more services, anything that I can imagine. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. Now, two basic products that I already spoke about that are powered by Esri that, that we use at ETI. I mentioned our Vision FMS your basic engineering design and management, uh, asset management tool built into the desktop. Number two, what I'm gonna add more information on today is the analytics, the vision analytics. What we endeavored to do is build one view, one view that would manage everything in a command center top-down view for any team. Meaning, if we can touch any bit of data in your, your footprint, the engineering team may not require the same thing as the marketing team. And the executive team may want to see a different view of different system data altogether, but they still will want to see it uh, in a geospatial way. So what we call this um, at ETI sometimes is our viewer. It's essentially um, for capturing KPIs for actionable insight, interactive processes all in real time. So I want to pause real quick and talk to you about some st simple steps of how we get there when a customer speaks to us about this. We look at all the systems that are integrated on the OSS side. 
we map all the ecosystem elements to their locations. We give them a visualization and a geospatial existence. We want to make sure those, all of those systems are open and flexible. We want to create business rules around these workflows visually so we can easily use these products. And we want to make sure that no silos exist that stand between that business unit and getting the information they need to do their job more efficiently. So, and finally, really, every department when purchasing something like this or endeavoring to build something like this has to be able to prove to upper management that they're going to monetize this. They want to measure it in an ROI type of way, and they want to continue to refine their methods as the quarters go on, as the years go on. So, in essence, what we built for our customers and what they have running in their knock centers at their desk tops on their laptops is really a bird's eye view of everything going on in their footprint at one time. So I'd like to talk about two quick cases here. I know um, um, that we have a couple of things uh, first that we need to ask. Um, as an employee, I want to make sure, am I leverage, leveraging all the data necessary in my ecosystem? What do I need to reference its location base. So ask yourself these questions. Can I automate this uh, crucial process with some kind of visualization? Um, which systems do I need to tap into? And do these processes need to be in real time? Some don't need to be in real time. There are certain things we update on a daily basis, weekly basis for our customers. Some are crucial to be real time. So I'm gonna to touch on this in a little bit, but in essence, everything we do with all of our projects comes down to two things. And really, these are the, the second two bullets, the three and four bullet that you see here. Will what I'm doing with visualizing all of this enhance the customer experience? Will it make happy customers in the end? Number two, will it benefit my organization in terms of efficiency? And I'm talking mostly about time and effort. And if we do that, it will result, result in uh, revenue efficiency. So those two things we always came back to during these projects. The first one I want to speak to you about, and I'm going to give you a short little demo of um, the overall system here, is a customer that we have in, in Tennessee. And they're a little bit different from your traditional telecom because they're a utility, but they have pushed out voice, video, and data services to their community and servicing a lot of people. So we support them with OSS and BSS, but what they wanted to do is track all their external operations in real time. They wanted a system that would track workforce management, meaning all the scheduling, all the ticketing. They also wanted a layer of network alarms and outages. They wanted to know when those outages were resolved. They wanted to be able to track all that subscriber information too, because if there was uh, an outage at someone's home, and a, work, a worker that was nearby that was getting done with a ticket, and we could see that they had a lapse of time where they could come over and service this unplanned outage, they could locate that immediately. The AVL, tracking vehicles in real time too is a big deal. And also tracking all the design and network assets in a separate layer entirely, so we can track all that OSP infrastructure. So let me jump over into this demo quickly and for a few minutes really show you an experience for that. So when you will, uh, because I'm connecting to this from a, a separate location, excuse any lapses in time here, but very quickly what I'm tracking in this map are a few things. And the way we've built this with an Esri powered back end is essentially, as you can see on the left hand side, subscriber services. We're tracking all the subscribers here on a map. This legend is also going to show you all the work orders that are going on in real time on this map. So as I light this up, I'm going to see a bunch of work orders going on in real time. I'm also seeing vehicles right now going that, that are out in the footprint in real time. Now, Important with these vehicles, every vehicle, just like every work order ticket, has a different type of, um, of purpose. 
So in here, I have things like the bucket trucks that are out there working on parts of the network. I have service vehicles that are out there providing more service or adding service to customers that are or subscribers that are already out there. I have install vehicles. Obviously, connecting customers or subscribers for their first time. And then I have vehicles that are targeted for commercial use. And I also have in this here, see, it's a little call out to AdTran. The AdTran fiber network uh, there has um, vehicles also in the footprint servicing anytime there is an issue or service impacting um, event going on in the network. So we're tracking all these trucks in real time just to see where they are in the course of their work. And if any given time I need to tap on one and center on a vehicle, that's simple to do. I can see in certain circumstances, you see patterns where a lot of vehicles are, uh, are sharing um, tickets and trying to knock things out with help from, from other folks. That's a great thing. We also track the history of these too, so I can select a truck or a vehicle and see where they've been historically. Very important to know if, uh, if you're trying to tie money around this in numbers and trying to track the best way to actually uh, work through the footprint per tech on a daily basis. Whoops, there we go. So let me move on here. I'm gonna zoom back out and show you another layer of just the work orders themselves. I might have zoomed, there we go. Now you're seeing some icons in here that are light blue, yellow, some red. These are representing today's open installs. So I know everything that's going on in the footprint in real time as these get closed out, these icons will disappear. Now, some of the other items I'm tracking here is I can see we, we have divided these up into residential and commercial. So I can see things coming in that are on certain networks during the day, because there are certain networks that deliver certain services on the, on the left-hand side here. There are also residential versus commercial tickets going on in the footprint on a real-time basis. One of the things that we always see is one of the first things that a customer wants us to track are alarms. The alarm's coming from the network in real time. So I've talked about the subscriber system. I've talked about the work order and ticketing systems. Sometimes those are multiple systems. We've, we've integrated all that here. I've talked about the vehicles that are integrated here. Now, I'm actually showing the alarms in real time coming out of that, uh, that system. So we're monitoring things like uh, the devices that would deliver service. So in this case, I'm monitoring some ONTs and I'm seeing different color codes on the left-hand side, things like uh, power failure, a battery fail, low battery. So some of these tell us there are issues going on immediately in real time. Others say are proactive or saying something is about to happen. I can start to see a battery going low or a device right before we lose it, that's always helpful to me to know to get teams and, and trucks into that spot and service that. So one of the things that I'm able to do with this tool in a very quick way is lasso a group of locations and tell you a little bit about them. So there are thousands and thousands of different combinations for this, but I'm gonna tap into one real quick here to show you um, some of the work orders going on in the footprint. Um, so I'm going to lasso, let's see, some construction work orders by type. Let me head down to some devices. Um, let's see here. When I want to lasso certain things, I've set up certain workflows here. So I can search for them in, with certain, in, in this case, work order types. In a report on a, a fiber gateway, I can select that. It looks like I only have one going on today. Um, I immediately get 
um, what essentially would be a spreadsheet full of data. Obviously, I'm only showing one in this instance. I'm also able to produce reports live from, from this interface. Any global reports that I'd want to select. Uh, let's go to an active device summary. So in real time, dynamically, it will pull information, all of the active devices that are existing in the network today. So what we've tried to do with this tool is allow you some floating spreadsheets to analyze data in real time, as well as some very formal reporting processes that would allow us to deliver information just by pointing and clicking and sending PDF off, a PDF off to another worker. Let me shift over here really quick out of this to our presentation, and I'm going to finish up with another quick case study. We have another customer that we had launched for a separate reason. Uh, they wanted market analysis and information out of their network, and the issue was that their marketing team was trying to sell services in new areas, and they needed integrations into four or five different systems. So they could really see the, their footprint, who were current customers, who were possible opportunities, who had certain services, and, and uh, on down the line. So we ended up doing a, a pretty complex project for them where we tracked all their churn and growth and exit codes when a customer would leave, all their trouble ticket trends, all of their business line information, uh, and we tracked everything regionally, down to pay-per-view consumption, campaign conversions, and even some government reporting. Atlantic Telephone Membership Co-op, uh, it's been a longtime customer of ours and a great customer. But what they're trying to do is get more efficient in analyzing their footprint. They were already an Esri user. So this was a great sell in getting the Esri-powered backend and Esri ArcGIS server um, exposed to more people there at ATMC. We started tracking right off the bat all their active subscribers, all their recent disconnects, all their former subscribers historically, anyone that was passed through on a bill, and any other opportunity that they thought was important to track, even things outside of the footprint if they knew that they were going into overbuilt areas in the near future. Tracking all their business lines, meaning their services, their bundles and packages, where they are being consumed the most, and then where they are being consumed the least. And so we took all this and started to color code all of the larger areas. And as we zoomed in, we could see the smaller areas and the trend over uh, several weeks, months, and then years that happened. Um, this is allowing them to target upsells a little better and to, to start to track their ARPU, their average revenue per user on a, on a weekly and monthly basis. The same thing you saw in the last demo or the the last uh, customer, we're using these floating spreadsheets to grab and lasso data so we can analyze this. We can immediately export to even Microsoft Office tools for easy use. Um, what we've seen in this is that working with data that lives in spreadsheets and form based systems is a little more difficult. So a visual tool like this was really the only thing that marketing could use to do their job quickly. And once we integrated all the back-end systems and gave them access to all of the different systems they needed, all they need to do is select those different systems and the data, lasso it, and then start analyzing. The services in their areas, they could select any service that they sell, dozens of services that they sell and track where those business lines are, who's consuming phone, TV, and data in any of the packages there. And for that reason, they track it historically and they can see why people are consuming it that way. Tracking residential versus commercial. As a business model, they're trying to grow commercially. So they're trying to track where the, the trends were in their footprint for commercial growth, even into certain overbuilt areas where they could easily identify uh, commercial customers that they could start to sell to. So their sales team had a tool in-house to make a plan and a strategy before they went out into the footprint. In general, their growth and their churn was the most important thing. When customers churn, we need to know why. We came up with 
tracking growth in all the different ways, new installs, the commercial residential types of service and by region, but tracking the churn by their exit codes and being able to see it geographically on a map to really start to track those trends and dig into those areas with their sales team is starting to be really effective for them. They're also tracking service impacting threats. Things like repeat trouble tickets that would usually exist in a separate department are now accessible for them. Issues on the network, things like that are things that marketing teams really need to know about to do their jobs the most effectively and sometimes they don't have access to all the correct information. At this point, I can, um, I can pass it back to Patrick. Um, I appreciate everyone's time today. Uh, Patrick, I know um, we talked about ways that our customers get started doing this. So if you wanna take that back from me, Patrick, we can continue that. Sure thing. Yep, I'll mention the first one, and then Brad, if you want to talk about the, the remaining ones. So I guess first off, uh, in order to start to improve your operational intelligence, it's important that you kind of deploy your WebGIS foundation uh, with ArcGIS, which is that kind of web services architecture that allows you to integrate the different systems and pull data in uh, and then visualize it in ArcGIS or within Vision 360. So um, Brad, I'll let you go ahead and, and touch on some of the other getting started points here. Sure, um, as, we, uh, as we integrate more data into a GIS front end, um, as at ETI, what I do is I evaluate the current data access and the different systems of reporting that the department need to do their job. And so uh, after we identify those systems, we evaluate all their current processes. We uh, define those that are manual. Um, we all brainstorm on an automated way that we could make this a little more efficient and work with um, the software powered by Esri to make sure that they had a workflow that worked for them, automated with the least amount of effort. So in every department you have priorities. Well, the, one of the issues is that as an overall organization, we have to prioritize all those different departmental priorities. And so what we've done, and when we do our analysis, is we talk about our return on investment, uh, the budget that we have in front of us already, what are the quickest wins that mean the most in terms of saving time, uh, saving money, and saving effort. So that's basically what we've done in our customers in the last many years to uh, start to consult with them and and deliver that intelligence back to them through Esri products and, and products powered by Esri. All right, well, with that, uh, I'll let uh, Randy field some, some questions that uh, you all might have. Yeah, we're coming up against uh, the top of the hour here, so let me answer some quick ones here. Uh, we had one, uh, was Esri technology applied in the California fires this year? And if, if you know we're a little short of time, but please submit your questions, and we will get individual responses back to you if we can't do it in in our time frame here. Uh, actually, if you go to esri.com/disaster, uh, you can uh, get access to what we call the uh, Esri uh, Disaster Response Program. And in fact, uh, for the wildfires, you can see the current status of those fires today. Uh, so yes, it was used in the wildfires, and we set this up for every major disaster around the world that uh, that happens. Um, here's one. Uh, would it be possible for you to share a copy of today's ETI presentation? Uh, Brad, what's the best way to get a hold of that presentation? Uh, the customer or whoever's interested can just um, reach out to me um, at ETI Software. My my email is b h-i-n-e at e-t-i software.com or you can uh, get my contact information through our website so feel free to to uh, ping brad and uh, get a copy of that uh here's one uh throw it out to either brad or patrick how is e-t-i vision 360 platform different from esri's arcgis for telecommunications sure i can take that one um okay. so 
Esri's ArcGIS is the underlying uh, technology that provides the spatial capabilities that I mentioned um, before. So it is a the web services architecture with the core capabilities that are exposed for our partners to build uh, specific solutions on top of. So ETI's Vision 360 platform uh, integrates some of the ArcGIS capabilities into their core solutions like Vision 360. Okay, great. Yeah, we're, we're out of time, uh, and we will individually respond back, or you can, if you have any other questions as you think of them later, uh, feel free. We appreciate everyone's time today. And don't forget, uh, you can go to esri.com slash telecom and look at any of the past webinars, including this one, which we posted, and we'll have a video available. I'd like to thank our speakers today, uh, Patrick Hulls and Brad Hine. Uh, appreciate the presentation and everybody have a great day.